Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. I know we've done some similar problems before and some people complain, oh, why are you doing the same type of problem? I think it's good for repetition and I also like these kinds of problems. Anyways, so we have this equation and I'll be presenting two methods. Let's get to work. The first method is a lot of work, so let's get it done. So first method, I'm going to use logs and you can use any base you want, base two, base five, base 10. I'm gonna use base 10 and I'm going to call it LOG, which is just log. When you do it in Wolfram Alpha, if you write log, it's gonna ask you, do you want to use natural log or instead you wanna use base 10? That's what I wanna use. So log X is equal to, or I don't wanna use X here. Log A is log A with base 10, okay? I hope that's understood. Let's log both sides. Now, when we log a product, what happens? It turns into a sum. So I'm going to write this as a sum of two logs. Log the first one, and then plus log the second factor, which is 5 to the x. And of course, you have to log 50 as well. Now, these are understood, but I'm going to put the 50 in parentheses. You can also put everything in parentheses, but I, I, I think it doesn't look that good with exponentials. Anyways, personal opinion. Now, next, we're gonna move the powers. That's what is cool about logs. You can bring down the powers. X minus one over X times log four plus X times log five equals log 50. And log 50 can be written as so many different things, but I like log 10 times five because log uh, 10 is one. So I can write it as one plus log five. Again, I use the product property uh, of logarithm. So there's quite a few properties that you need to know, but that's it. So now in this equation, obviously we have to pay attention to something. We have X as a variable, the other is a constant, but we have log four and log five. So they're different numbers and it's not good if they're not the same, because I want to be able to, you know, kind of condense this equation into a manageable chunk. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this as log two squared. So let's write this as log two squared. And then I'm gonna write the log five as one minus log two. And let me tell you where that comes from. Log five can be written as log 10 over two. And then log 10 is one, so it's one minus log two. In other words, log five and log two add up to one. Isn't that cool? And then of course, I'll do it on the other side as well. So everything is expressed in terms of log two, which is nice. We can go ahead and move this two to the front. That's gonna multiply this number over here, that's gonna make it two X minus two over X times log two plus X times one minus log two and then equals two minus log two. So what I did was added these two numbers and now here's the most important part. You don't want to deal with fractions. You want to get rid of the X at the bottom. So multiply everything by X. So you can do it this way. You can go ahead and put an X here they're gonna cancel out. You can put make this x squared and you can just put an x here, easy, right? Without dealing with any of the complications. Now, let's see what we get from here. First of all, notice that this is the coefficient of x squared. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it as a quadratic formula. This is quadratic in x, so it's gonna be one minus log two x squared, okay? And then plus, now I kinda need to collect the coefficients of x. So here I see two minus log two, but that's gonna be negated. And then here I see two log two. So this is gonna bring another log two x, that's gonna make three log two, and then minus two x from here, okay? So it's gonna look like this, three log two minus two all multiplied by x. And if you really wanna see why this is quadratic in x, uh, I can go ahead and use a different color here. Notice that these are coefficients. So you can write it as ax squared plus bx plus c. Make sense? What is the c? The c is the, c is the what? C is constant, yes, okay. What is the constant? Let's go ahead and take a look. Our constant is going to be, what is our constant? Well, we're gonna get like a minus two log two from here, and that's pretty much our, uh, what our constant is going to be, right? Minus two log two. Okay, so that's uh, gonna be a minus sign then. Let's put a minus two log two. That's the only constant, poor constant. There's only one. That's okay, and that equ that's equal to zero. You see, this is quadratic in X. Let's go ahead and solve it using the quadratic formula, but I wanna find the discriminant first so that I can directly 
um, you know, plug it in. The discriminant is 3 log 2 minus 2 squared plus 4 times 1 minus log 2 b squared minus 4ac in other words. If you simplify this, you're going to get something like this. To keep a long story short, this is going to become log 2 minus 2 quantity squared. Make sense? This is nice because um, how do I know that? You can expand and do it. Left as an exercise for the reader. Don't hit me for that. Uh, and But from here, you can find it pretty easily. Uh, it's good to exercise, right? Now, we're going to plug it in. X equals negative B. So we're going to negate the coefficient of X, which is 2 minus 3 log 2 plus minus the square root of this. And obviously, the square root and the square is going to cancel out, but leaving us with a minus plus sign. But we already have that, so we can go ahead and cross these out. Keep that in parentheses. And that's all over 2a, which is 2 minus 2 log 2. You could also leave the 2 outside if you want. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this or split it up into two solutions. 2 minus 3 log 2 plus log 2 minus 2 over 2 minus 2 log 2. And then from here, the 2's cancel out. We end up with negative 2 log 2. And I'm going to write it as 2 times 1 minus log 2, right? And now the 2's are going to cancel out. And if you negate the bottom, you're going to get log 2 over log 2 minus 1. That's one of the solutions. And the other solution will be more surprising. Ready? 2 minus 3 log 2 minus log 2 plus 2 divided by 2 times 1 minus log 2. And then we're going to go ahead and simplify this expression. Let's go ahead and simplify it. 2 plus 2 is going to be 4 minus 4 log 2 over 2 times 1 minus log 2. And of course, you can factor out a 4 here. That's going to give you 1 minus log 2 divided by 2 times 1 minus log 2. And 1 minus log 2 is going to cancel out. It's not 0. 2 goes into 4 twice. And yes, x equals 2 is the other solution. So one of the solutions is an integer. That's what makes this problem actually nice, in my opinion. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which is definitely less painful. <laughs> okay, so bear with me. As I did before, I'm just going to raise um, 2 to the second power. So we're going to get this. I just cut that part. Okay. Now it's 50. Now we're going to do the following for 50. 50 can be written as 2 times 25, so 2 times 5 squared. And I'm going to put the powers of 2 together and I put the powers of 5 together. And this is what it's going to look like. After I do that, 2 to the power, I'm, I'm going to subtract 2 to the 1 from here. So that's going to look like this. 2 to the power x minus 2 over x times, actually not times, it's equal to 5 to the power 2 minus x because 2 minus x, right? Makes sense. Now, notice that x minus 2 and 2 minus x are opposites. In other words, x equals 2 makes both of them 0. So that's a solution because 2 to the power 0 equals 5 to the power 0. Don't you agree? Yes, that's one of the solutions. Now, we're going to get rid of the x minus 2 to simplify our process. I'm going to write this as 5 to the power negative 1 times x minus 2 because they are opposites. And then you can go ahead and raise both sides to the power 1 over x minus 2 or just cancel them out. This gives you 2 to the power 1 over x equals 5 to the power negative 1. Or you can write this, raise both sides to the power x and write this as 2 to the power 5 equal 2 equals... 5 to the power of negative x, which means 5 to the x equals 1 half. Wow. How do we solve this problem from here? Log both sides. Log 5 to the x equals log 1 half. And now this is log 2 to the power of negative 1. And you can bring a negative to the front. x log 5 equals negative log 2. So x becomes negative log 2 over log 5. Why is this different from the... First method, it's not actually different. It's the same thing. If you work it out a little bit, log 5 can be written as 1 minus log 2. And then if you negate top and bottom at the same time, you're going to get log 2 minus log 2 minus 1 as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.